We spend a lot of time at Pocket Now talking about high-end and luxury smartphones, but there's a whole other side to the mobile market. A more affordable sector, often dismissed as too laden with underperforming products to warrant much attention. Well, this year, Motorola and Nokia have done a very good job surprising us in this area, delivering the low-cost Moto G and the Lumia 520. We've reviewed each one separately. Now it's time to put them side by side to see which one is truly El Cheapo Supremo. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Moto G versus Lumia 520. Now, while these smartphones are each very affordable from most perspectives, there's still a sizable gulf in price between them. Here in the States, the Moto G sells for between $179 and $199, depending on storage option, while you can get a Lumia 520 right now at the Microsoft Store for less than half that cost, just $59 out the door. Of course, everyone wants to save as much money as possible, so the question becomes, what do you give up if you go for the Nokia phone over the Motorola one, and is the sacrifice worth the savings? Let's find out. Out of the box, probably the first thing you notice is the difference in design philosophies at work here. As a simplified version of the high-end Moto X, the Moto G exudes a pebble-like feel, with rounded contours pleasing to the hand, and also Motorola's characteristic finger dimple on the soft-touch casing around back. The 520 keeps the soft-touch paint job, but appears more like a soap dish in profile, with harsher edges up front and a more straightforward casing that makes it feel thicker in the hand, even though it's over a millimeter thinner. The 520 also packs a much less impressive display, the 4-inch WVGA panel looking pixelated and washed out next to Motorola's larger 720p screen. The Lumia screen is also much more reflective, meaning it's tougher to read outdoors. And internally, Nokia makes a processor sacrifice as well. The 520's dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4, not as modern as the new quad-core Snapdragon 400 in the Moto G, with only half as much RAM on the Nokia as well. Pop open the back plates, though, and the Lumia starts throwing punches of its own. While the battery is significantly smaller on the 520, it's also removable meaning road warriors can pick up some $5 replacement packs from Amazon or eBay or wherever and just swap them in as needed. Not so for the Moto G's embedded power plant. Also, the 520 offers micro SD expansion to augment its 8 gigs of onboard storage. With the Moto G, you're stuck with either 8 or 16 gigs, depending on which model you choose. The commonalities return when we return to the basics. Neither phone packs 4G, NFC, or anything more fancy than Bluetooth 4.0 and some multicolored battery doors. These are impressive budget devices, but remember, they're still budget devices. Fortunately, neither one really acts like it on the software side. Now, the differences between Windows Phone 8 and Android Jelly Bean, soon to be KitKat, have been well documented. To boil it down rather succinctly, Android will be a fit for you if you're a Gmail user who's heavily invested in Google's ecosystem, and Windows Phone will be a better match if you're an Outlook user. But more interestingly, each of these phones is a solid performer for what I'll call general use. By that, I mean something like the daily use test I conducted with the Moto G last week. If you're the kind of person who reads a little bit, texts a bunch, keeps up with friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, shoots a Snapchat photo every now and then, watches the occasional film on Netflix or YouTube, needs to catch a bus, needs to drive a car, needs to pretend to crash a car, loves gaming, loves music, stays organized, stays in touch, and generally uses a smartphone for all the things a smartphone can do, each of these does a splendid job on the software side. The limited system memory makes multitasking a little bumpier than usual on both, but overall, responsiveness is spot on, and each device delivers. Taking the phones out of the lab for some testing revealed much of the same parity in terms of capabilities. Callers came through clear as a bell on AT&T's network here in Greater Boston, with both phones delivering excellent sound, both via earpiece and speakerphone. Callers said the Lumia was a bit clearer, while the Moto G offered better noise cancellation. 
Firing up the 5 megapixel cameras reminds us of the low end nature of these smartphones. Neither has what you might call knockout features, with the bare minimum in terms of shooting options. Each is expandable with third party software lenses or apps, but shooting with default settings reveals that the cameras are capable of beautiful color and depth in some shooting situations, and milky, noisy output in others. Side by side in moderate lighting, they're comparable shooters, but get them into low light, and the Lumia is the winner, <laughs> relatively speaking. Also, we prefer shooting with the Lumia thanks to its two-stage hardware key, which makes focusing easier. So while we'd naturally rather have a high-end camera phone with us, if we had to choose one of these for optics, we'd pick Nokia's product, even given Motorola's advantage of the LED flash. That might seem like a slam dunk for Nokia in the outdoorsman department, but uh, hold your horses there, lumberjack. The Moto G features Motorola's water-resistant nano-coating, meaning it can hold up to nature's splashes. And even though the warranty probably won't cover it, it'll even hold up to a shower, even if you get it in the spray a little. That's in direct opposition to Nokia's own user manual's advice for the 520. So phone abusers take heed. The Moto G may be the better fit for you. Compromises aside, all this leaves us with a pair of phones that have no business being priced as low as they are. The Lumia's outstanding voice quality, expandability, and superior camera will appeal to some, while the Moto G's better display, more robust ecosystem, and all-weather ruggedness will make it worth the premium to others. We think the Lumia 520 is probably the better value for someone free to jump between platforms, but really that's just a function of its absurdly low price point. Both will make you reconsider what a budget phone is capable of and each is an absolute steal if you live in the right market. And that's going to do it for this one, folks. We hope we've made your budget phone shopping a little easier this holiday season. If you want more details on each of these phones, don't forget we have a full review of the Lumia 521. That's the T-Mobile version of the 520 and the Motorola Moto G. Full reviews of each at PocketNow.com and here on our YouTube channel page. And while you're visiting our channel page, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Also, follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. And thank you so much for watching. Once again, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. We'll see you for the next one.